In this video, you're going to learn everything that you need to know to get started on Unholy Death Knight in Cata Classic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course, the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Kata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. It should be no surprise that human is hands down the best race for Unholy Death Knight. The racial ability will to survive is simply just too strong to pass up here. If you've been playing Wrath of the Lich King, you're going to know that this racial allows you to break out a CC on a two minute cooldown. This means you can equip two damage trinkets instead of one, allowing you to build massive pressure and easily win games. Now, for those of you who are tired of playing the same races, we do have a solution for you too. Dwarf finally becomes a solid pick for Alliance with rogues and ferals being incredibly strong in Cataclysm, stone form can be a lifesaver as it clears all effects when used. For those of you who are dead set on playing Horde though, then your only real option is Orc. But don't let the Alliance fool you. The Orc racial is extremely powerful for Unholy Death Knight. Now, in addition to the passive 15% stun reduction provided by Hardiness, Command provides 5% passive damage for your pet. This is amazing now that Dark Transformation is finally in the game, and you're also going to get access to Blood Fury, which itself is like having a mini on-demand damage trinket. Orc can be a strong option, but most Death Knights are going to find themselves as human. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. In Season 9, there are two talent builds that you can choose from focused either on Scourge Strike or Necrotic Strike. Let's start with the Scourge Strike build, which is what you're going to see on screen right now. This build is focused on delivering high on-demand damage through Scourge Strike rather than continually spamming it through Necrotic Strike. This doesn't mean you won't use Necrotic Strike, but rather you're only going to use it when the enemy healer is CC'd or to snapshot attack power buffs. Rage of Rivendare is what really sets this build apart as the Scourge Strike build, as it increases all Scourge Strike damage by 45%. Now with this build, you have two really flexible talent points. You can either move the one point from Endless Winter into Sudden Doom, or you can move one point from Sudden Doom into Endless Winter. Essentially, you're trading a free kick for more Death Coil procs. There's no right or wrong answer here, and it's going to come down to preference on your part. If you're wanting to play a build more focused around Necrotic Strike, then we recommend these talents. What you're going to notice is that the signature talent, Rage of Rivendare, we mentioned earlier, is now gone. Instead, we pick up Bladed Armor for more attack power. In Cataclysm, the healing absorbed from Necrotic Strike actually scales with attack power. This means we're giving up baseline damage on Scourge Strike for the flat attack power. This can be good when playing with more Dot and Rot focused classes such as Shadow Priest and Warlock. If you watch our Unholy Death Knight course at skillcap.com, you're going to find out just how powerful Necrotic Strike really is, and knowing how to min-max it is honestly a crucial part of climbing. Now, the same flexibility with Sudden Doom and Endless Winter applies to this build, but you can also move the points from Bladed Armor to Blade Barrier. This provides a passive 6% damage reduction, so if you're struggling to survive, this can be a good option. Along with Talents, the Glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm as well. Now you'll have three additional Prime Glyph spots on top of Major and Minor. The glyphs you'll play with are largely the same between the two builds. There is just kind of one minor difference that we're going to talk about. 
Your prime glyphs should be Death Coil, Scourge Strike, and Raise Dead. The only change you're going to make is if you're playing the Necrotic Strike build. In that case, you're going to drop Scourge Strike for Glyph of Icy Touch. The reason being that we, of course, will not be using Scourge Strike in most circumstances if we're not specced into Rage of Rivendare. Every one of these glyphs are fairly straightforward damage increases for our primary abilities. For both builds, you have the same three major glyphs, Anti-Magic Shell, Strangulate, and Death Grip. Now these are the utility glyphs, with Glyph of Strangulate being the most important by far. When you use Strangulate as an interrupt, rather than just a blanket silence, it's gonna last two seconds longer. And this might not sound like much, but it takes your five second silence to a seven second silence. Glyph of Anti-Magic Shell is perhaps one of the most versatile glyphs that we have. On the surface, it's a simple two second increase to the duration of this ability, but this makes it a strong defensive and offensive ability. We can use Shell to stop a kill attempt or avoid CC to close out the game. Death Grip is one of Death Knight's signature abilities and this glyph increases the range on grip by five yards. This is gonna make it easier to grip in healers, set up goes, and close out kills when enemies try to run. Now, unlike most other classes, our minor glyphs are actually pretty powerful. For both builds, you're gonna be slotting in Blood Tap, Death's Embrace, and Resilient Grip. Resilient Grip is your most common minor glyph, as if your grip hits an immune target, the cooldown will automatically reset. Death's Embrace will also be critical to our survivability, as Death Coil will refund 20 Runic Power 2 when used for healing. This will be extremely noticeable when you use Lichborn for healing. Blood Tap is the outlier in that it doesn't do much, but it is kind of a nice glyph to have. It simply removes the self-damaging component of Blood Tap. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Throughout this course, we've mentioned the term snapshotting a number of times, which is a mechanic that you may not be completely aware of if you've not played Cataclysm before. Snapshotting is all about playing around your trinket buffs, your weapon procs, and tailoring cloak enchant to allow your damage over time effects to have more pressure. You see, unlike retail, where your damage over time effects update as you get procs, in Cataclysm, this isn't the case, which means that every time we get one of these high-value modifiers, we must reapply our diseases to increase our damage. These dots can then be extended through Festering Strike, so you get more modifier values for longer. The best Death Knights look to do this constantly. Now, apart from our diseases, there's one more part of our class that benefits from snapshotting, that being our biggest offensive cooldown, Summon Gargoyle. This means that before you try to get a gargoyle out, you must get a weapon or trinket proc first or it's going to be dealing significantly less damage than it should. This is also a major part of why high-rated players use it in the opener, as your trinkets are more likely to proc when the fight's just begun as they're not on their internal timers. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in slot gear for season nine. First up, let's go over your stat priority. Your highest priority is hitting the 5% hit cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss and nothing is honestly more frustrating when you're about to win the game and then your killing blow just misses the target. It's terrible. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This is gonna ensure that your spells don't miss, just like we talked about. Now, as a Death Knight, any ability without the word strike counts as a spell, such as Death Grip, Strangulate, and Icy Touch. You'll then want as much strength as possible here. You're going to naturally acquire this by equipping Plate Armor. After that, you'll want Haste. There's no specific breakpoint you're looking for here, but rather you want to stack this as high as possible. After Strength, you have a bit of a dilemma. You can either go All Mastery or All Crit for your offstat. This is simply a question of sustained versus burst. If you go mastery, you're gonna have much higher sustained damage, but if you go crit, you're gonna have significantly higher burst windows, especially if those crits land from your gargoyle. 
Crit will generally win out in the earlier seasons when all the health pools are low, and Mastery tends to be better later down the road. Unlike other melee, we don't care about expertise as much, just more than half of our abilities are spells and thus are unaffected by that stat. Before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre bis gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. In Season 9, all of your best in slot gear is going to come from PvP. Death Knight is very squishy and you're going to be thankful to have the resilience. Your main pieces are going to be the Vicious Gladiator's Desecration set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's chest piece, gauntlets, helm, leg guards, and shoulders. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Cloak of Alacrity. Your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Arm Plates of Alacrity. You'll then use Vicious Gladiator's Girdle of Triumph in the Waste Slot. Finally, to round out your off pieces, you're going to have Vicious Gladiator's War Boots of Alacrity in the Boot Slot. For your weapons, you'll be using either the Vicious Gladiator's Decapitator, Bone Grinder, or Great Sword, depending on your racial. All three weapons have the same stats, so it's ultimately dependent on your racial. The Relic slot's going to be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Conquest. For your jewelry, you're going to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Choker of Accuracy. For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Signet of Accuracy and Cruelty. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity on the Horde. If you're Alliance, you're going to replace this with the Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Victory. You'll then use the Vicious Gladiator's Insignia of Victory. Now, you can't consider dropping this for a PvE damage trinket, but it's honestly just not recommended. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to stick to your stats. If you need hit, then you would reforge expertise to hit. After that, your stats become preference. For example, if you want to do more sustained focus mastery build, you can reforge any crit pieces to mastery. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gymmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Strength, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant, Greater Inscription of Jagged Stone, is going to require that you get Exalted with the Therizane. This will be well worth it, as it provides a sizable boost to attack power and critical strike. Then head to the Auction House, where you're going to pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from peerless stats will be beneficial. You're then going to grab Major Strength for your Bracers, Mighty Strength for your Gloves, and Haste for your Boots. We recommend Tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is going to be enchanted with Sword Guard. If you choose another profession, then you're going to want to grab Greater Critical Strike. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Dragon Scale Leg Armor, and then put Fallen Crusader on your weapon. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your Meta Socket, you're going to want to be slotting in a Reverberating Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some extra strength and increase the amount of damage that your Critical Strikes deal. In your Red Slots, you have a couple of options here. You can use Bold Inferno Ruby for more damage, or you can use Resplendent Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you need to be using Stormy Ocean Sapphire so that we can reach our spell penetration cap of 195. And then in yellow sockets, put Mystic Amber Jewels for your resilience and durability. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there's a few choices to choose from. You're going to want to go blacksmithing and tailoring, but you do have a little bit of flexibility here too. Blacksmithing is an obvious pick, as it gives you two additional sockets on your bracers and your gloves. What these are are prismatic sockets, meaning that you can fill these with any stat that you need or strength gems for more damage. Your second default pick is tailoring for sword guard. This enchant provides a massive attack power buff, which we can snapshot with our gargoyle and necrotic strikes. As an alternative pick to tailoring, you can go jewel crafting. The benefit is that you're going to gain a little more main stat from your gems. This can be easier to manage as you're not playing around a proc, but it is overall less pressure. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you'll want focus macros for Death Grip, Chains of Ice, Darksome Alacrum, and Strangulate. 
Now you can modify your Dark Simulacra macro to also recast the spell that was stolen at your focus target. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros. This will give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. Now for your pet stun, you need to make sure to macro autocast off on Claw. Claw takes your pet's energy and uses your pet's global cooldown. If you want your pet to stun the second you push the button, then you need Claw off. Once you've stunned, you can turn it on again using the pet attack macro. This macro can serve a dual purpose and frees up some keybinds. If your pet's dead, it'll summon your ghoul, and if your pet's active, it'll cast Dark Transformation. In emergency situations, you might need to instantly use Dark Pact. This provides a big heal. You can also pair it with Health Stone if you're playing with a Warlock. Blood Tap instantly gives us a free death rune and is best paired with our utility buttons so we don't have to wait for a rune to use them. Now it's time for our damage macros. This macro assumes that you're human. If you're not human, you want to adjust the trinket slot so you don't accidentally use medallion when you're pushing gargoyle. Our final recommended macro is Unholy Frenzy Party 1 and 2. While this is a great cooldown for yourself, it's not always something that you will use on yourself. In fact, you can even use it on your healer, as it deals a small amount of damage every few seconds to break them out of CC. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go though, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're gonna climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.